Welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we have a great show for you today. First topic we'll be covering is some AL Playoff predictions. After that, we'll be going over my award predictions for both the AL and National Leagues. And after that, we'll be talking about the blockbuster signing of Jordan Montgomery to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, before we get into all that, I would like to ask you to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read right in the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net as you see on the screen. Really does help the show. Really does mean a lot. So thank you so much for that. And let's get into the show here today. So as I just talked about, you can and as you can see, it is a busy show today. Opening day is tomorrow, which I am very, very excited about. So we have a lot to cover and a lot to talk about. So the first segment we'll be talking about is the my predictions for the American League and the playoff picture for that league this year. Now, I intended to do this yesterday with our special guest, Eric, from the GSMC Wrestle, Wrestling Laureate podcast, which is on every day, 8 p.m. Eastern, so go check that out. But uh, we got a little sidetracked and wound up only talking about the National League Playoff Predictions. So we are going to talk about the AL Playoff Predictions now and round it out. T- tomorrow, we will be talking about, of course, opening day, but I will also be giving my full standings predictions. Those are less important than the playoff predictions, but I'll be giving those tomorrow as we don't really have time today. So I'll be on the lookout, th- be on the lookout for that tomorrow. But before we get into the AL Playoff Predictions, I would like to mention yesterday I did talk about uh, I had the Reds winning the Annal Central. Now, I still do stand by that take. I believe the Reds will. But over the course of the show for the past few days, so I've talked about Matt McClain, one of their biggest stars, and him having a shoulder injury, which I thought was no big deal and would only take him out for a little bit. I was wrong, obviously, as it was announced today, that they don't know if he'll be back this season, which is a drastic step than what I thought. So it's still a, it's a big loss to the Reds, but I still stand by my take, but I wanted to apologize that I did not get the right information out that I said he wasn't going to be out for that long. Obviously, I was wrong in that way. So again, I'm not a medical expert. So next time I'll try to get my sources more carefully there. But again, not a huge deal for the Reds, but still, I mean, he's a very good player, but I still stand by the Reds winning the Central. So just to go over the takes I had yesterday for the NL, then we'll go straight into the AL without the sidetracking I've done now. I had the the Los Angeles Dodgers as the one seed, the Atlanta Braves as the two seed, Cincinnati Reds as the three seed, the Arizona Diamondbacks as the four seed, the Philadelphia Phillies as the five seed, and the San Diego Padres as the six seed. I, exp- I explained those yesterday, so if you want to check them out, that video is on the channel, GSMC Podcast Network and GSMC Sports Network, so go check out the video if you would like to see my predictions there. So yeah, let's get straight into the AL now, and I'm really excited to share my thoughts, so here we go. So first, in the one seed for the American League, I have the one seed of last year. I think they're going to go twice back-to-back now, the Baltimore Orioles. Now, I do not have the Orioles winning the AL East for most of the offseason, especially after the Yankees acquired Juan Soto. But with the recent injuries to Garrett Cole and Aaron Judge also being a little nicked up as well, I I picked the Orioles now for a lot of reasons. One, I think they added a lot to their pitching this offseason. I think Corbin Burns is an incredible player and a true ace that they've been missing. I think the other players in the rotation, like Dean Kramer, John Means, Grayson Rodriguez especially, are going to step up and become really good pitchers. I think once Kyle Bradish gets healthy, that's a really great number two for Baltimore. So I really just love this pitching rotation. I think the bullpen is still good. Yainir Cano going to be in the eighth inning. Probably Craig Kimball closed games. I don't really know how I feel about that, but he's a veteran. He shouldn't do that bad, and we'll see if Felix Bautista comes back this year. I don't think he will, considering he got Tommy John, but I think crazier things have happened. But just going away from the pitching now, let's talk about what the Orioles' strong suit is, of course, which is their hitting core. I mean, Adley Rutschman, Ryan Mountcastle, Austin Hayes, Gunnar Henderson, Jackson Holiday is not even up at the big leagues, Colton Kowser, Heston Kerstad, Cedric Mullins, I go on and on and on about how amazing the hitting core is. Anthony Santander, who I forgot as well. I'm sure I'm missing some other players even with that. So their hitting core is incredible. They added to their pitching staff. They're young. They're hungry. I don't think a lot of players are going to regress because they are so young. So I think it was was neck and neck between them and the the Yankees to win the AL East, and it was neck and neck between them and the the team I had for the two seed, for the, the one seed. But I take with the Orioles simply because they are young. They have a lot to prove. And right now, injuries have affected them a little less than a lot of teams, including the Yankees and the team I'm about to talk to next, who is the number two seed in the AL. So, Orioles are my number one seed, and that is, yeah, that is what I'm saying right now. Number two, I have the Houston Astros. 
Now, the Astros, I have two for pretty clear reasons. They're an, an, an incredible team, an elite team that we've known about for a long time. We've known they've been elite, and they even they added to it this offseason, getting the best closer in baseball in Josh Hader. Their bullpen is absolutely insane with Brian Abreu, Ryan Presley, and Josh Hader probably being the best back end in all of the league. The rotation is good for Amber Valdez, Christian Javier, Hunter Brown, J.P. France, once you get Luis Garcia, Justin Verlander, and Jose Arquiti back, it'll be even better. That's why they weren't the number one seed, because of the pitching injuries. Again, the Orioles have had some, yes, but I think it's hurt them less than the, than the Astros have. So I still think they're an amazing team. I just think because of some of the injuries they've had, it pushed them to the number two seed like last year. So number same number one and number two so far. But, yeah, still, still an incredible team and not much to say about it there. I think the Astros are amazing, and really that's it. In the number three seed, I have the Minnesota Twins. Obviously, I have them winning the Central. This is a pretty easy selection to me. I think the Twins are a pretty incredible team. And even though they didn't add much this offseason, frankly, I don't think they needed to. I think they had a lot of good young players who were ready to fill in the roles, especially with guys like Sonny Gray leaving. You have people like Louis Varland, Chris Paddock, Simeon Woods Richardson, who, who have either been in the minor leagues or have been injured, who were able to fill in roles like that. You have Pablo Lopez, Joe Ryan, Bailey Ober, who are, who's already in the pitching staff to make it still an incredible unit. So you added Carlos Santana as well, who's a nice addition. I like what you got back in the Jorge Polanco trade. You're going to have guys like Brooks Lee there. You're going to have, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting, I'm blanking on the name quickly, but um, Eduardo Julian, Carlos Correa, Byron Buxton is hopefully going to bounce back. So you have a lot of good players on this Twins team, and I'm really excited to watch them. I think their pitching's great. I think overall the entire team's great, and that's why I have them winning the Central. Um, yeah, I'm very high on the Minnesota Twins, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do and just really excited to watch their season. I think they've been an underrated team this entire offseason period, and I understand why because they haven't made much moves, but still, um, I think they're really good. Brooks Lee did not make the LB roster, I will say, but I think he'll be up rather soon, and I think he will be a starter. So, After that, we're going into the wild card seeds. At the number four wild card seed, I have, no surprise here, the New York Yankees. I think we all knew the Yankees had to make the playoffs one way or another. I was very close to making them win the ALA East, but because they didn't, they will have to settle for the fourth, the top wild card spot. Now, the Yankees are an amazing team. I don't think anyone's doubting that, especially with adding Juan Soto, but injuries have hit them hard. You lost Garrett Cole, who's your ace, the guy you didn't think would get injured. You have a lot of other injury risks in that rotation. Carlos Rodon, Marcus Stroman, Nestor Cortez. So the Yankees have an amazing team, but I think they have a little more risk than a lot of other teams do as well. But I think Juan Soto and Aaron Judge, that duo, is simply lifting them above that. You also have so many other complementary players in that lineup as well. You have now Anthony Volpe, DJ Mayhew when he gets back healthy, Anthony Rizzo hopefully going to be fully healthy this year, Austin Wells has a Trevino and a nice catching platoon, Jason Dominguez whenever he gets back. So I think the Yankees have a pretty amazing team, and no matter what injuries they have, I don't think it would have stopped them. So it was pretty clear they had to be in the playoffs in my prediction. So that is where I put them. Put them in number four, but again, I don't think the Yankees being number four is an indictment on them on their ability. I just think it's more of showing how good the AL is. Now is where it gets fun. Now you have the five and six seeds for the AL. There's a lot of teams I thought about here. There is a, probably five or six teams I thought deserved these two spots, but I'll explain why I ended up going with these two teams. So in the number five seed, I have the Seattle Mariners. Now, the Mariners are a team I'm very high on. I think their young talent's pretty incredible. Already having uh, Julio Rodriguez, you also have amazing young starters like Emerson Hancock, who just came up, Brian Wu, who is starting the season on the IL, but hopefully you can get him back, George Kirby, Logan Gilbert, Luis Castillo. So you have an amazing pitching staff. Your bullpen's pretty nice as well. So I th that was part of it. And then the hitting, the hitting core, you added a lot to it. You had a Mitch Garver at the DH position, where Polanco's a really nice get at third base. You already have some nice guys there. Of course, you have Julio. You have some other nice guys in the outfit as well, complementing that team. J.P. Crawford there as well. Ty France, hopefully looking for a bounce back season. Cal Raleigh, who's an amazing catcher. So I think the Mariners have a pretty great team, and I think it's finally their year to get back to the playoffs. I think they could do some damage in the playoffs. Everything goes right. I think with their young pitching staff, I'll be really watching them too. So... Yeah, I think the Mariners are definitely 
a very good team, a team to watch out for. And I was very close to not putting them in the playoffs, but I did in the end. And the number six seed here, the team that I have being the final wild card spot, which might come a surprise if you've listened to this podcast. And that is going to be for me, it is going to be the Texas Rangers. Now, the Rangers are a team I've kind of dogged on these past few weeks or so about their pitching and how bad it is. But the more I've thought about it, the more I think they are going to be a playoff team, whether I like it or not. Yes, their pitching is not very good right now. But that's only going to be temporary. You're going to get Max Scherzer back. You're going to get DeGrom back. You're going to get Tyler Malley back. Who knows how good they will be, but you're going to get him back. Even right now, it's not that bad. Nathan Avaldi, John Gray, Nathan, uh, Andrew Heaney, Dane Dunning, good, all good pitchers. No real legitimate ace guy there, but Avaldi was last year, so who's saying he can't do it again? So I think their pitching, pitching staff is bad, but it won't be that bad for long. And even so, it's not disastrous. And then you have the young hitters. You have Evan Carter, you have Wyatt Lankford, and Wyatt Lankford is one of the big reasons I have this team in the playoffs. I I just think Wyatt Lankford is such an incredible talent that he's going to put such a big addition to that lineup. Already, that's amazing. I mean, going over this lineup, it's just the pure amount of talent in this Rangers lineup is absolutely insane. Jonah Heim, Nathaniel Lowe, Marcus Semien, Corey Seager, Josh Young, Adolis Garcia, Wyatt Lankford, Ezekiel Duran, Evan Carter. Like, that's an insane amount of talent. There's no bad hitter there. There's no hitter where you can go, okay, you know what? It's getting a little weak now towards the end of the lineup. We can lay off this guy. No. Like, that. that's just insane to me how good of a hitting core they have. So that's really the big reason I have them in the playoffs. I just think their hitting core is going to be so, so good. So, yes, I have three AOS teams in the playoffs. So overall, that is what I think is going to be the playoff picture for now. Now, if I had... And now, explaining why I left some of the other teams out. First, we'll go with the Blue Jays. I left the Blue Jays out, not, again, for a reason of them being bad. It's just I think they need to do a little bit more this offseason. I think they've had a lot of potential these last few years, and I don't think the moves they did this offseason were enough to get them over teams who added a lot, like the like the Mariners and the Rangers who were adding with young young players. So the Blue Jays, very good. But Yara Rodriguez, Justin Turner, Isaiah Conner falefa I just don't think these are guys that are going to be big enough additions to get you over that hump. I think an Otani would have been, and I think a Soto would have been, but obviously they didn't get either. So I think they're still a very good team. But I think there's teams better than them, and I think it's more of an indictment on how good the AL is than how bad the Blue Jays are. Their counterpart, the Rays. The Rays are a very good team, but I just think there's too many question marks about them right now. What's going on at shortstop? How is the pitching rotation going to handle all the injuries? So I think they're very good, but again, I just think with all the question marks they have, I wasn't comfortable putting them in the playoffs. So that's it, and yeah. Um, again, Ray's very good team and a team I thought about a lot about putting in, but I just couldn't find a spot for them. I think the other teams are better. Going to the AL Central now, the Royals and Tigers, I'm going to kind of put them in the same place because they're kind of the same team in a way. Both younger teams who added a lot. I think both teams are very good. I just think next year is the year for them. I just think you have to watch players develop more. I think you have to add more complementary pieces to the big names you added if you're both these teams. I love what both these teams did, and you'll see tomorrow who I have second in the AL Central and who I have third. It's going to be those teams, second, third, and we'll see Guardians, but yeah. Um, So, yeah, again, I wanted to put the Royals and Tigers in. I really wanted to find find a spot for them, but I just couldn't. And, again... I think they're very good. I think they're going to surprise a lot of people with how good they're going to be. I think their off-season additions were great. It's just I think they're simply just better teams in the AL right now, and that's why I couldn't find a spot for them. So those were all the teams I was really close to putting in, but in the end, I just couldn't find a spot for them. So those are my AL playoff predictions. Remember, I'm going to be doing full standings and World Series predictions uh, next episode, which is tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to tell you who I have in the World Series now. It's a very early pick, but obviously it is the preseason one. So, yeah, we'll talk about that. But first, we're going to go to a break here, and we'll talk about our second segment today, which is going to be about the AL award predictions. I've been holding off on doing this for a little while now. So, yeah, just going to talk about my award predictions for the AL and uh, the guys I have winning the awards. And uh, we'll see you after that. So uh, thanks, and uh, see you then. Bye.